This is the Running Rehab Guy, getting into some of the interesting times that we've been kind of working through here in the Midwest, just like everywhere else. The shoe that we're taking a look at today is the Zero Shoes HFS. Highly flexible shoe, as which the HFS stands for, and it very much is that. Much like all Zero Shoes, you can pretty much fold this one up, put it in your pocket, and one thing that he has really done a fantastic job of is creating a shoe that not only is flexible in terms of your frontal plane, it's also very torsionally flexible. It's a wonderful thing, especially if you're looking for this shoe to have versatility. So if you're looking for a shoe to be not just your training buddy on the roads, but also your friend in terms of your group exercise activities, your cross training, or if you're looking to get into what I did with it a lot, which was working into some beach body workouts, uh, getting a bit more creative with my fitness since my range has kind of gone down, it's really a pretty handy companion. Again, we're gonna take a look, kind of stem to stern of the shoe, kind of go from front to back and show you some of the better features of it. First thing you'll notice right out of the box with the shoe, it's a much cleaner look as far as an athletic shoe from Zero Shoes. So you can take a look and see, they've still got the Hirachi style straps. They're just hidden under these nice thin layers of TPU that have a really cool reflective pattern. If I let this kind of wobble in the light, you notice it a lot of it when you're out on the roads, especially when you're in the early morning or in the late evening. It's really nice to have that security blanket that somebody will be able to see you coming. And in this shoe, you definitely get that. Nice bright coloring, nice reflective patterning, not just along the midfoot, also towards the heel and even toward the backside. They've got a really cool embossed logo on the back. They've got some nice cross stitching here just for added durability to the back of the heel. But once again, you're not getting a ton of structure back here. You're just getting basically enough so that the shoe won't break down on you over time. And that's something that Zero does a great job of is producing a nice, durable, yet barely there shoe. It's a very as close to barefoot shoe as you're going to get as far as feel from the roads, feel from the trail. And again, for versatility's sake, something that they added this model that I haven't seen before is basically a tire tread pattern. So you got the chevrons going in opposite directions, couple of herringbone patterns, and then you've got these nice layered grips along the outside edges of the sole. Especially when I was doing a lot of my cross training, my P90X3, my T20, things of that nature where I'm in the house kind of on my parquet floor over here. This shoe does not allow me to slide even when the ground is sweaty. And goodness knows I do sweat quite a bit when I'm working out. And this shoe keeps up with me and keeps me on my feet rather than sliding off of them. Same thing happened when I was out, especially on the trails uh, where it's gotten quite muddy. There's a couple areas where I mean, shoot, it almost looks like a tough mutter out there because there's just so many obstacles and things around. You'd think that with a sole that's that thin and lugs that really aren't that deep, they're only two millimeters deep, you wouldn't get a ton of good hookup, but it really does a fantastic job of making sure that you can keep going forward rather than backward, and it really does a great job in three dimensions. Now, the other thing that they've created that's a little bit different that I wanna take a look at is if you pop out the insole to this shoe, compared again to your Zero Shoes Prio especially, they've tweaked the foam of the insole. The insole is again very thin, it's only about two millimeters as well, and really what you're looking for overall is about seven and a half millimeters of overall, basically shoe underneath your foot. Very thin, it's very focused on making sure that you can feel the world around you, making sure that you can feel what's going on. This particular insole is a little bit of a different feel to it than previous ones. So you had in previous editions kind of oscillation between different foams. So it depended on which Prio you picked up or which Terraflex you picked up. Some of them had a very spongy type uh, foam underneath, almost like a memory foam. Still very thin, but didn't have a lot to it. Uh, then you also had some that were a little bit more firm, kind of like an EVA. But the difference there was that as opposed to having like a little bit of like hexagon shaped patterns in the bottom so it could filter things out, it really was pretty much a closed system. You didn't get quite as much good moisture management. What they've done here is standardized the insole just a little bit more so you've got the best of both worlds. You got a relatively firm foam, you've got ports along the top edge of the shoe. If I hold it up to light, you can see some of the holes coming through. You've got the ability of the moisture to pull from the bottom of the foot and then run right out through my favorite part of the shoe, which is the brand new upper. The upper in this shoe 
has a dual layer mesh. It's got some really nice engineered mesh over top and a very silky soft inner mesh. As opposed to some other barefoot models that you'll see out there like your Vivo Barefoots or if you take a look at even some of the Vibrams that are a little bit more spartan in terms of their inner materials, this thing feels almost like you're wearing a bathroom slipper. It is really, really very nice, feels good to the foot. Whether you like to wear socks, don't like to wear socks, either one you're going to be happy in this shoe as far as being a barefoot or close to barefoot aficionado. On the trade-off side, one thing I have noticed with the new upper, much like with most of the Zero shoe line, there's a very particular and kind of inconsistent fit. Now, when, they, when I went to originally size this shoe, unfortunately I live in the middle of Iowa, which is a very beautiful and wonderful state, by the way. However, there are not quite as many brick and mortar stores that carry a wide range of very minimalist shoes. It's a little bit of a tougher following out here, depending on where you live. So I rely mainly on what I can read and what I can gather from Zero Shoes website. The previous models, they did a pretty good job of letting you know Okay, the shoe fits a little particular. You may have to tweak your sizes a little bit. When I went to look up the HFS, they had a note specifically on there that had said, we've adjusted our sizing. Everything should fit standard, true to size. I would say you're still gonna wanna size up about a half size in this shoe. This shoe feels pretty comfortable to me barefoot for the most part, but if you try to put even a thin sock on, it feels just a little bit uncomfortable. Not so much at the edges because the shoe's got a very generous toe box, but right at the top edge is where I could still feel my toes just a little bit of that uncomfort level. On the flip side of this, I haven't been able to get quite as much mileage in this shoe as I had with my Topo that I've also been using. This guy, I've only been able to get in about 55 miles. Now I've done hours and hours of cross training, did a lot of body weight exercises and some plyometric training, but really in this shoe, I haven't been able to get quite as many miles. One, because we're kind of under some interesting restrictions these days, but, and some other stipulations, but two, it just doesn't feel quite as comfortable if I don't have that sock on my foot for longer periods of time. Just for this, the, the simple anti-friction under my foot, not necessarily along the sides. Now, the other thing that I've noticed that they've done to really update the shoe that's really quite nice is that at said toe box, if you can get the fit dialed in, we've got a nice TPU overlay over the top as opposed to a cross-stitched suede which I noticed on the Prio, also the Terraflex as well. Really, if you have this shoe dialed in as far as your fit, that's gonna feel nice because it's going to feel like you're not rubbing quite so much, there's not as much friction at the toe box. And the other nice thing is it's gonna save you some weight, a good amount of weight. This shoe, as a matter of fact, shaves about 0.4 of an, or 0.4 of an ounce per shoe compared to your Prio which is the closest thing I can compare it to in the Zero Shoes line. However, that still leaves it behind some of its competitors in terms of your Vibram Five Fingers and your Vivo Barefoots that are gonna be somewhere between an ounce and two ounces lighter. So I really would love to see the shoe kind of trim up the weight a little bit. One of the two ways that you can really go about doing that is taking out some of the stitching and some of the suede pattern over top here in the tongue, a little bit beefier than it could be. And then the other thing that you could probably do to take the weight down just a little bit is to work out some of the materials in the back of the shoe. Now there's some nice padding in through here in the heel counter and that feels really comfy, but I feel like you could take a few layers off of that and shave even just a quarter of an ounce per shoe would make it still feel a considerable amount lighter over the course of time. The other thing that's kind of an interesting thing I've noticed from Zero Shoes recently is that the price point is starting to go up a little bit so this shoe retails for about $110, and that also makes it a little bit of a tougher sell, especially if you're looking to have a quiver of shoes. This probably isn't your daily go-to trainer unless you have really taken the time to concentrate on your form and build your mileage slowly and gradually through the shoe. And generally speaking, I'd like to see those down somewhere in the you know, $80 to $100 range. Getting up that extra 10 bucks is bringing the price point more into a technical shoe which this definitely is not. Overall, I would say that with a few minor improvements, mainly to the sizing, this shoe could be a wonderful go-to shoe for a very wide variety of activities, great versatility. It just needs a couple of minor tweaks uh, after its maiden voyage to give it really what it needs to be a solid performer. Any questions that you have, I do have a, again, more detailed review available in written form on runrepeat.com. Otherwise, feel free to like the shoe, like the page. Any questions that you have, leave them in the comments section. I would love to answer them for you as best I can. 
Uh, in the meantime, between now and my next review, please stay safe, please stay healthy, and I'd love to see you on the road soon. Thanks.